Human rights issues are often pushed back during war times. Let's see what's happening in Gaza with I-24 News' Natasha Kirchuk here in the studio. Hi, Natasha. Hi, Yaakov. So last week, I sat down with a young man who escaped from the Gaza Strip after being tortured by Hamas. He's actually the son of a Hamas police officer. This is really a wonderful young guy. He has big aspirations, but he was forced to leave his hometown because of the repressive regime that is ruling his home. Today, he lives in Turkey. He's not a criminal by any means. His only crime, according to Hamas, is that he's gay. Um, and he got caught. He got caught with his boyfriend. Um, and as you know, being queer in the Gaza Strip, also just generally in, in many Islam Islamist nations, uh, is forbidden. LGBTQ people can face death. They can face torture. Uh, but they are certainly not the only ones. What we've been seeing is many reports coming out recently from Human Rights Watch, from Amnesty International, outlining the abuse of of critics and opponents uh, to Palestinian leadership like Hamas and, of course, the Palestinian Authority. Uh, but, you know, of course, Abdul, that's the name that we're giving him for this story because he didn't want to reveal his identity. He shared his story. He was super brave to do that. And I think it's important that everybody hears it. Let's watch. First of all, I want to thank you for hearing my story. I'm 26 years old. I was born in Gaza Strip. I was growing up in the refugee camp. When I was 17 years old, I was able to do it. 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 أكثر أنواع التعذيب يعني في نوع من التعذيب اللي يرفع رجلية حتى صعبين يضربوا على رجلية حصل بعد بعد كم سنة كم كل مرة كانوا يعتقلوني كان يقوم بتعذيب بنفس الطريقة. Abdul can't remember when he first knew he was gay, but he always remembers living in fear. This is the first time that he's telling his story to the world, and we've changed his name for his safety. He's also asked us not to show his full face. Like most young boys living in the Gaza Strip, Abdul was raised in a strictly religious Islamist household, going to mosque every day with his family. But because Abdul's father was a member of Hamas, Abdul had to be even more careful to hide his truth. What's life for gay people? It's hard to be gay because I don't feel free from Gaza. There are many people gay on Gaza Strip, and they, they're from Hamas also. If you are gay, you should be hiding. It's so hard, I was so scared. Scared for, for everything, you know, for hating, for kidnapping. I was so afraid. I was afraid uh, Hamas find out I was gay. To be queer in the Gaza Strip is a crime, and members of the LGBTQ community are constantly at risk. Hamas, the Islamic terror organization that's ruled Gaza since 2007, prohibits homosexual relations and prowls the streets for anyone breaking the law. And those who are caught can face death. That's why when Abdul was seen with his boyfriend, he was almost immediately reported. Other people saw me with my boyfriend and they told Hamas. Over the course of five years, Abdul says Hamas would kidnap him off of the streets, torture him, and then release him again. At the age of 22, they let him go for the last time. They make me swearing on oath on the Quran that uh, I don't do that again. That you won't be gay again? Yes. But even though Abdul was free, he had nowhere to go. For two years, Abdul lived on the streets until he managed to scrape together enough money to escape into Egypt and then make his way to Turkey. I paid $1,500 to get, to get out of the Gaza Strip and enter Egypt. Even though Abdul now lives thousands of miles away from Gaza, today he lives in constant fear that somebody will identify him and that he'll be sent back into the clutches of Hamas. I miss my family in Gaza, but I can't go back. Why can't you go back? Because I'm scaring. Abdul's story, sadly, isn't unique. The Gaza Strip and the West Bank are listed among the most dangerous places in the world for LGBTQ people. And apart from the physical danger of potentially being exposed, there are devastating social consequences. 
A recent poll conducted by the Arab Barometer Research Network found that only 5% of Palestinians in the West Bank accept same-sex relations. There are no statistics on the matter in the Gaza Strip because of how taboo of a subject homosexuality is. But it's not only gay people who face abuse by Palestinian leadership. Just last month, Human Rights Watch released a report alleging that Palestinian authorities in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip systematically torture critics in detention to punish and intimidate them. The report describes violent abuses of power by Palestinian forces, just like what Abdul says he endured at the hands of Hamas. Violating human rights by Hamas and even the PA in Ramallah is becoming a common practice, is, is becoming the strategy, it's becoming the policy, it's becoming the security ideology for the security forces, uh, those related to Hamas in Gaza or those related to the PA in the West Bank. Both authorities, they are becoming a dictatorship that only care about keeping themselves in power. They, they don't care about the rights of the Palestinians. They are another layer of occupation under the general Israeli occupation. Officials of the Palestinian Authority and Hamas deny allegations of systematic abuse and refuse to hold any of their security forces accountable for violating the human rights of their own citizens. For many Palestinians, not having anybody to turn to has become status quo. I think whether the violation of Palestinian human rights comes from Israel or from Hamas or from the PA, the ICC is the only address left to the Palestinians. And everybody that dared to violate uh, the human rights in Palestine should uh, have consequences. I would like to see those leaders in Gaza and Ramallah that have violated human rights of Palestinians be brought to justice with, with the ICC. For Abdul, the only way to get justice was to leave his home in hope of a better future abroad. It's been over a year since he made it out of the Gaza Strip, and he says that he finally feels free. I hope to be a DJ and play music around the world. I'm enjoying my life in Turkey here, and I'm happy. I'm trying to learn the uh, Turkish language. I'm working on a restaurant. I'm just living a normal life. I can do what, what I want. There's no more hiding. Yeah, and Natasha, uh, we're not talking just about LGBT issues in in, uh, in Gaza, obviously. No, absolutely not. I mean, when you're talking about the torture and abuse of detainees, of critics, of people who oppose. Uh, the rule, essentially, in, in the Gaza Strip, and not only in the Gaza Strip, also in the West Bank, um, the list goes on. Human Rights Watch actually, as I, I spoke about in this piece, released a report just last month in the beginning of July, uh, talking about how Palestinian security forces systematically abuse critics and opponents. Um, of, of the leadership. You have to remember that Gaza exists under a blockade from both Israel and Egypt. It's two million people who are essentially living in this coastal enclave at the will of what comes in and what comes out. Um, and of course, that is heavily regulated because of the threat that terror groups pose to Israel. And to make matters worse, you then have uh, Hamas, an Islamist terror organization that is restricting expression of freedom, essentially quashing any type of criticism um, through oppressive abuse and torture. We know that the unemployment levels are sky high in the Gaza Strip. They're 46 percent, um, even more, almost 50 percent, 46.6 percent. That's one of the highest unemployment rates in the world. You have 62 percent of people in Gaza requiring food assistance. And even when we saw people take to the streets and speak up against the situation, they were violently quashed. These uh, demonstrations were violently quashed by Hamas. So despite the millions of dollars of international aid that we know is coming in, it doesn't seem to be going to the people. And despite the fact that we're seeing articles even right now of Gazans who are saying uh, they don't want Hamas necessarily to stay in power, they don't want the violence anymore, uh, they don't really have a voice. There's nobody to turn to, whether it is their own leadership or Israel or international powers. Right, well, this is Hamas uh, on the West Bank. Mm -hmm. Are things different? 
unfortunately, not very much. Nizar Banat is a name that we all became really familiar with in the last year. Uh, this was a prominent activist. He was an outspoken critic of the corruption uh, that Palestinians were facing within the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank. And in June of 2021, he was violently murdered by Palestinian security forces. They stormed his house in the middle of the night. Uh, they beat him with metal batons. Then they took him away in a military vehicle. He ended up dying on the way to a hospital. Um, and even though Palestinian authorities allegedly charged 14 officers over his death, uh, nobody ended up truly being held accountable. Nobody has gone to jail for this, um, even though we saw thousands of people, uh, Palestinians, take to the streets in the West Bank um, to, to see somebody held accountable for the murder of, of a person who simply spoke up against the Palestinian Authority. That was his crime. Um, so it's just another sad story of having nowhere to turn for the average Palestinian, like I said. Um, not their own leaders, not Israel, not the world. People are stuck in a very tragic situation, just like Abdul. Right, and uh, we don't really hear enough from the international community about the issues like this here. You know, it's funny. Obviously, the majority of the reports that we see coming up from organizations like Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, are very much targeted at Israel and uh, Israel's uh, wrongdoing, Israel's crimes. We're not really seeing much coverage of what goes on within these territories. There's also no free elections, so there's no clear statistics about what's happening in the Gaza Strip and in Hamas. Um, and as a result of that, there's just less... Uh, information as to what and, really happens. And way less focus on this. Absolutely.